Today I want to talk about my experience studying mechanical engineering at TU Berlin in Germany to hopefully give you a good look at what it's like, how hard it is, what the vibe is like and what kind of projects and courses you have. I did both a bachelor and master in mechanical engineering and I also did some exchange studies in France and Sweden. And I'm just gonna go through the experience from start to finish, starting with my first day of engineering school. I had moved from my hometown to Berlin for my studies and I'm from a small town close to Hamburg so I moved about 300 kilometers away I think and I picked Berlin because I wanted to be in a big city and I picked mechanical engineering because I enjoyed math and physics in high school and because it's the most popular type of engineering and I just didn't know what the differences between all the different types were so I just went for the most popular one because of that I didn't really have specific expectations of what studying mechanical engineering would be like. I really didn't know what it was. Like I had looked at the course list and it sounded cool. And what was it like when I started studying? The very beginning of studying was really fun because there were a lot of activities for like meeting other people, a lot of parties. I had moved in with two other students into a flat so I got to know them and everyone just kind of brought home their friends. So I got to meet a lot of people in a short time and it was nice because I felt like I belonged. I clicked with a lot of people there. I made a lot of friends in the first few weeks of engineering school and I kind of also stuck with those friends until the end of engineering school and with some of the people I'm still friends today. But then when the courses started it started to get tough really quickly. At my university the first semester or really the first year was a lot of basics of math and physics. Everything really theoretical, not applied to anything you know you didn't know what you needed this formula for so I had like calculus 1 and 2 mechanics 1 and 2 algebra basics of electrical engineering and basics of mechanical design yeah it was all very theoretical and since I didn't know anything about mechanical engineering it made it even harder because I couldn't even try to figure out what this would be applied to like I've said it before I didn't know what a transmission was and then at the end of my first year I did an internship it was a mandatory internship we had to do for us studies and we had to I think complete it within like the first year or a year and a half and this was an internship in metal work it wasn't like an engineering internship it was a factory work internship it was hardcore <laughs> doing physical metal work for I think six weeks so I had to get up at 5 a.m. every day because my shift started at 7 I think and then it went until 3 o'clock or something like that and I was like filing metal drilling into metal manual turning of parts doing some CNC turning and milling as well where I got to like use G-code, the coding language you use to talk to CNC machines. And CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control. So it basically means it's a more automated tool machine compared to like, uh, let's say, a manual turning machine where you would move the tool yourself with your hand. Being in that internship really sucked because I had to like stand in one place all day. I couldn't sit, I couldn't really walk around. I had to stand all day and that's really tiring. My shoes were way too big because I needed to wear like steel cap safety shoes and they only had them in like four sizes too large for me because I didn't have any women's sizes so I was walking around with like clown shoes they also didn't have any gloves that fit me so I had two glove sizes too large I don't have very big hands and <laughs> it's very hard to work in gloves that are just like sticking out over your fingers the people there were nice it was all men I was the only woman in that company except for like I think one person working in the office area so that was a change at my university it was maybe 25 percent women so there was a pretty good group of women so yeah being in this company was very different from that and I was just so tired <laughs> after that internship but I have to say I'm still glad that I had to do it because I learned so much about what I'm actually meant to design as a mechanical engineer only when you see how the things are produced that you design you can actually design them in a better way so this is like a common complaint about engineers is that they design things that 
changes can be made. This is what like machine operators will complain about when they get a technical drawing. They're like, this doesn't make sense. The tool doesn't go there. Or if I wanted to drill this hole, I would first have to drill through this other bit where you clearly don't want a hole. So there's no access to this. Problems like that. And so I guess that's also why we had to do this internship. Then my second year of my studies already went a little bit better, I want to say. We had some more applied courses, some more design courses, something with measurement, technology and sensors, data analysis and fluid mechanics. And I also failed my first class around that time. <laughs> I think I failed a total of two classes during my bachelor studies and none during my master. I, I, yeah, I did fail some classes. One of the classes I failed was like design theory two and maybe control theory. I don't quite remember, but clearly like <laughs> it turned out all right. It was actually good for me, especially repeating design theory two, which is, uh, you know, where I had to design transmissions. It was good to repeat that because then by the second time I did it, I actually understood what the transmission was and that made everything make sense. And I did way better that second time around. So it was really a blessing in disguise. I don't think there's any shame failing a class if you then change something about the way you approached it. Don't fail a class and then you just study the exact same way for the retake and then you fail again. And then in Germany, third chance is your last chance. So <laughs> you better don't mess it up then. So yeah, in Germany, at least at my university, but I think it's pretty much the same everywhere, is that you only get three chances to pass an exam. And if you fail three times, you're kicked out of your studies. And you also cannot study anything else in Germany that uses that same course that you failed. But yeah, so <laughs> as long as you don't fail three times and you do something to catch up and to fix what went wrong, I don't think it's a big deal to fail classes, even though it really felt like a huge deal. Like I was very upset. I thought, oh my God, does this mean that engineering is not for me? Something like that. It did not mean that. It just meant that I didn't yet really know how to study well. Uh, I didn't fully understand what the class was about and I didn't take full advantage of the resources like talking to the professor or talking to tutors in their office hours, asking my friends for help, watch YouTube tutorials. There are so many things you can do to catch up if you fail a class. You just need to take advantage of it. Now, apart from failing a class during that second year, I also started having some doubts just because my grades in general weren't as good as some of my classmates and I wasn't really used to having like kind of bad or average grades from high school. And I guess I just hadn't really found my thing, like the field that I enjoy or that I am good at. Yeah, luckily I stuck through that because in the third year there were a lot of improvements happening. The third year was when I really had a lot of freedom to choose different courses and I figured out that I like everything with like production and automation. So I took some courses in that direction that I also did much better on than I did with like the basics of math and physics. I took a class about CAD, so computer-aided design for car manufacturing, which was super interesting. And at that point I thought actually that I might want to become a design engineer. I also had some projects during that time. I had like a project on finite element analysis, which I did not enjoy finite element analysis or FEM, but I did really enjoy working in a group on the project because I had a great group. I was working together with some of my friends and even though the topic <laughs> sucked a little bit, it was still a fun project. So I also realized that I just like the teamwork aspect of engineering. And I also took a French course at my university because I was about to go abroad at the start of my fourth year. So <laughs> I should say my bachelor was designed to be three years, but I did not finish within three years. And that's actually also very common. Most people don't finish within the target study time. And I also didn't try to, like everyone always said, just take your time. It's more important that you pass all the courses then <laughs> that you go too fast and then you you know fail three times and then you're out and also just like to have some time to have hobbies or to try out extra courses that you find interesting so yeah, that's why I was taking my time a bit and I decided to go abroad for a semester even though I didn't need any more classes like I had already fulfilled all my classes except for like one but I was like I really want to go to
to France. So I went to INSA Lyon, Institut National des Sciences Appliquées de Lyon, and there I had, I wrote this down, Conception Mécanique Assistée par Ordinateur, which was like a CAD class. I had Projet Transversal du Besoin au Prototype, and that was like a development project where you develop from a need to a prototype. So we were developing like a catapult for glider planes, so planes that don't have a motor, you need to somehow get them up in the air. And we were tasked with that and we decided to come up with a catapult and had to calculate how to do that, you know, like the math behind it, decide which materials we wanted to use. It was <laughs> pretty fun even though, well, it was all in French and my French wasn't that great, so I don't know how much I contributed, but yeah, it was still fun. And I also had a uh, transfer thermique, <laughs> which was like thermodynamics, and I had responsabilité sociale de l'ingénieur. So this was about the social responsibility of engineers, which is quite common to have a class like that. It's just basically about making sure that you use your engineering knowledge to do something good for civilization and not something evil. Yeah, that's very likely a class that you have to take. And then after five months in France, I returned back to Berlin. I actually still had to do another internship, but this one was not like a metalwork internship. This one was an engineering internship. And I decided to go into a consultancy. It was a very small consultancy that were doing consulting to startups and small and medium-sized companies for technology projects and how to get funding for those from the state. So if you do an innovative project as like a small company or even a university that works together with a the company, then you can often get funding from the states for certain topics that are hot at the moment that the state wants to fund. And then this company was helping them prepare the application. So there I learned things like how to write a business plan, how to make a pitch deck, financial planning for these kind of projects. It was really helpful in that way because these are actually some skills that you don't usually learn in engineering school but they really help you on the job. And then after that internship I actually also started working at that company for a little bit and then I decided to work at a different company. So then I worked at a startup and the startup I worked for they were building like this software that could automatically analyze technical drawings and then make a quote. So like if you order any custom parts, like custom machine parts, you make a drawing of the part and then you send it to someone who could produce it. And then they have to decide how much it's gonna cost to produce. And it's very difficult to do because it's a custom part, like they've not <laughs> made it before. So they have to look at the drawing and be like, okay, I guess we're going to do this on a CNC turning machine. And then we'll do this last part on a CNC milling machine. We're gonna need this many different tools. So that's gonna be this many tool changes, you know, calculating like how much time it's gonna take to make it how many different tools you need and stuff like that that's all going to impact how much it costs every minute every second that you spend on one of these very expensive machines is costing you money and then you also need to take the material into consideration the weight of the part things like that i was working there as a student in sales i was calling companies asking them if they might want to try our services and get their parts made from us then i actually switched into quoting where i was looking at these drawings and calculating the prices and helping train the software that they were building to come up with these price estimates in an accurate way. These were just student jobs I was doing next to my studies for like 10, sometimes 20 hours a week. And even though these jobs can be a little bit boring from time to time, because you don't get as much responsibility as if you were working full time there. So you sometimes get some mundane tasks, but you still learn a lot. Yeah, that's why I just kept <laughs> switching jobs because then I wanted to learn something new. I kind of <laughs> recommend actually doing it that way. And it's also a great way to get hired. Now, I didn't want to get hired after my bachelor's, but if I had wanted to, then I could have put in an effort to get hired at one of these companies and had a good chance getting in way easier than if I had not worked there as a student. So around the time when I started this new job, the startup is also when I went into my fifth year of my bachelor, even though it was meant to be three years. But at my university, I could already start my master's if I wasn't lacking that many more credits to finish my bachelor. And I really only needed to finish the bachelor thesis. And because of that, I could already start my master's. So I was kind of <laughs> doing the fifth year of my bachelor, but also starting the first year of my master. And I fairly quickly then finished my thesis after that, after like a few months. And then I could just focus on my master's. 
masters and I decided to do a mechanical engineering master so the same topic that I did during my bachelor there are a lot of people that do more specialized masters but I still felt like I didn't really know what direction I want to go into and I knew that this master's degree gave me complete freedom over what courses I wanted to take so there were no mandatory classes in this master I just had a list of different courses and projects that I could pick from and there were some rules like you needed to pick a certain amount from a certain list and stuff like that but there was nothing that was mandatory so I could really make my own study plan and that was the main reason I did this and then I did end up specializing within automation and production technology at the end of this fifth year of my bachelor which I then had and first year of my master I then quit my job because I decided I wanted to really power through I wanted to get some courses done for my master because I was about to go abroad again and I knew from experience that it's not so good to put so much pressure on yourself when you're going abroad it's better to just get it done in the system you know and then have a bit more freedom abroad so that's kind of what I did and then in the summer before the second year of my master started I went to Sweden where I went to KTH Kortehua in Stockholm to do an exchange semester there which I later expanded to a whole year but yeah the plan was to go there for half a year because I thought it would be nice to be in Stockholm and because I had really enjoyed my first semester abroad so I wanted to do this again just experience a new country and I ended up liking Sweden so much that I then decided to stay another half year there so I stayed a whole year I was still officially studying mechanic engineering but I was really taking a lot of freedom in what class I was taking I didn't really care if I could later use them towards my mechanical engineering studies because I really want to take some like business classes entrepreneurship classes during that year was also when COVID hit so actually instead of going back to Germany I just stayed in Sweden because I didn't have to go back you know university was not happening in person everything was online so I took some classes in Berlin again took them online I did an internship at a Swedish company which was a battery manufacturer which <laughs> I've mentioned in other videos because I ended up working there later so yeah I did an internship and then they also offered me to write my master thesis there which I did and <laughs> because I had done so many classes within entrepreneurship and business I actually had almost completed the full curriculum of another master's degree which was entrepreneurship and innovation management so I ended up applying to that master which I got accepted to and then being like well <laughs> I already did all of these classes uh, I'm just gonna do my master thesis and then get my degree so that's how I kind of stumbled into doing two master's degrees and how I never actually went back to Berlin even though I was officially still studying there so now we're getting kind of into the third year of my master even though my master was also supposed to be two years but because I was doing a second master at the same time I ended up taking three years to do the two masters and I started my mechanical engineering thesis which was it within like battery production I was writing that at the company that I had done the internship at and then I had to start <laughs> another master thesis at the same time for the other master which was something within like um, finance I wrote about ETFs which is like a financial product exchange traded funds looking at sustainability rankings and how much impact those have or don't have so I was doing like two very different topics at the same time and it was very stressful I don't recommend this it also was interesting because I really enjoyed being able to do two such different things at the same time you know I have a lot of interests I don't like to stay in one corner and do something very specialized in one area and then just keep doing that I want to do a bunch of different things I finished both master's degrees from Sweden even though one of them was technically in Germany all because of COVID and I started working at the company where I also had already done an internship and written my thesis and all in all I spent almost seven years studying which was supposed to be three years of master two-year master and a one-year master and I did all of that in seven years so I guess in total like one year longer than I was supposed to take honestly I don't regret taking longer at all because there were so many things that I was able to do next to it like going abroad two times without really worrying about what kind of courses I was taking there and just taking advantage of the course offering of that new university working next to my studies doing internships volunteering being a part of different student clubs I was doing a lot next to my studies and I would not want to exchange that for having studied on your lesson and that was my full study experience let me know if you have any questions because I'm surely gonna do another Q&A very soon 
soon and I'm happy to answer any questions about my experience. If you'd like to know what it was like for me to start working as a mechanic engineer, then you should check out this video right here.